Bonjour. We are driving to one of my favorite towns, Brantome, known by the locals as the Venice of the Natural Park region, Perigord. Because like an island, the heart of the town is surrounded by the river Dron, with five bridges connecting it to solid ground. When I see that beautiful mansion up there by the T-junction, I know we are only five minutes away. My name is Leon and in 2016 I left Cape Town, South Africa to come and live here in the French countryside. We are crossing the Coude Bridge, or as it's called in English, the Alba Bridge because of its bend. Now this bridge was built in the 16th century for the monks to cross from the abbey to their private gardens. But before we get to the abbey, I want to show you how ordinary French people celebrate Christmas in rural France.
There at the back you can see the oldest bell tower in France, built separately from the Abbey Church. This Benedictine Abbey was founded in 769 by Charlemagne, or better known as Charles I or Charles the Great. And this was the staircase leading to the monk's dormitory. I wanted to take you to uh, the caves at the back of the abbey, but unfortunately it's closed for the time being. But fortunately, I met a wonderful guide. So, let me hand you over to him. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, of course. My name is Guy Benfield. I'm guide here, uh, or I am when we're allowed to open when it's not the <laughs> COVID-19. And the things you can visit here are the Abbey Caves. The Abbey itself is Town Hall, so you right. can't visit it, but you can admire it from the outside. Right. You can visit the Abbey Church, yes. uh, which dates from the 11th, 12th centuries all the way through to the 19th. Okay. Uh, various modifications through the ages. Right. And when COVID-19 is, COVID is over, you can also visit the 11th or 10th century bell tower, which right. is amongst the oldest in France, probably the oldest in France. The Abbey Church is dedicated to Saint Pierre, Saint Sicaire, a child saint who was worshipped from the time of Charlemagne as one of the victims of the Massacre of Innocents. Now, the Massacre of the Innocents is the incident in the Nativity narrative of the Gospel of Matthew in which King Herod ordered the execution of all male children two years old and younger in the vicinity of Bethlehem. And here is a sculpture representing the martyrdom of Saint Sicaire. Right, back to Guy. We're in front of a 13th century diptych, a uh, two-part representation of the massacre of the Holy Innocents on the left-hand side and the Holy Innocents going up to heaven to meet God on the right-hand side. Herod is very ugly. The traditional yes, yes. Uh, myth says that the uglier you are, the nastier you are. <laughs> and, and Herod also has a monkey-shaped devil on his shoulder whispering nasty things into his ear. Uh, oh. The sculptor has mocked Herod by putting one leg over the other. On the right you can see a church, which in this case is joined to uh, the bell tower, which is not the case here. We have what's called a campanile bell tower, which means it's a completely separate construction from right. the church. Right. Now you can see here that Herod is wearing a glove, symbol of mischievousness and manipulation and oh, dishonesty goodness, yes. in art. Um, uh, if you oppose the um, hand of the soldier to his hand, the soldier has a bare hand which, is, which symbolizes more honesty. Each one of the soldiers has a dead baby um, held in his hands. Uh, well, no, one held in his hands and the others, the baby actually uh, um, uh, crossed by a sword, yes. skewered on the sword. Yes. At the bottom you can see some people praying for the end of the massacre, but their prayers won't be, won't be heard. On the other side you can see the Holy Innocents carried by angels in a boat ready to go up to heaven. But they're adult. Why are they adult? You have to include the people looking in the story that's going on because yes. of course they don't know how to read and they may not really have felt that they were part of the story when they saw the babies on the other side so oh, really? we've shown some big babies here yes. so that they feel like they're part of the story 
when they go up to heaven, they will meet God, who in this case is the white-bearded God. And instead of being in a boat, like the holy innocents at the bottom, this is a coquille Saint-Jacques, a scallop symbol of the St. James Way, oh, the Camino de Santiago, the pilgrimage route across the Pyrenees to Spain. Right. Behind the abbey, the built abbey, you have troglodyte dwellings and the very mysterious semi-pagan Last Judgment sculpture, which we think is from the 14th, 15th centuries. Wow. It's very yes. macabre. Uh, mm. It has the Grim Reaper yes. in it. Uh, who is in, in France, the Grim Reaper is French. She's called La Faucheuse, the fool being her sickle. Oh, oui. uh, but it's interesting that in English-speaking countries, the Grim Reaper is male, and in, in France, I don't know about other Latin language countries, yeah. but uh, it's, a, it's a female yeah. in France. And oh. this macabre side yes. um, reflects the fears of the 14th, 15th centuries, when, of course, we had the oh. Hundred Years' War before yeah. between England and France. Thank you so much for all this information. Let's walk past the Abbey, now the Hotel de Vaux, or Town Hall, because I want to show you, before the creation of the large garden beyond the Albo Bridge, this was the private garden of the Abbot. The name Medici Fountain shows the Italian inspiration of the Renaissance and also the royal court contacts of the Lord Abbot Pierre de Boudet whose pen name as author was Brantome, and in 1895 his bust was unveiled upon this 17th century fountain. Peeping over the wall, you can see the caves behind the abbey that the guide was talking about. And we'll definitely come back to see this once they open again. Right, let's make our way back to the Elbow Bridge to cross over to the larger garden, which is now a park. The round tower and the pavilion were formerly linked by a walkway with an arched gateway, and together they formed the southern defences of the abbey. The pavilion, a perfect example of the Renaissance style, was built at the beginning of the 16th century by an abbot whose coat of arms can still be seen above the door. In the park previously, the private gardens of the monks, I want to show you some of the oldest trees, as well as the memorial in honor of the children of Canton who died in the two world wars. Crossing another bridge to the island part of Pantom so I can show you around the old town. 